so in the first part of this three-part series, we were talking about what is roughness uh, and, and getting the idea that it can be specced on a print in a certain way, it can be uh, uh, manufactured in a certain way, and uh, and then, so how do we measure it? And, uh, and, and so this is uh, actually quite a challenging thing to measure that you see up there. That's part of a pad for uh, polishing wafers. And uh, I'll talk more about some of the challenges. And, and you guys were here for the first part of this, so uh, I guess we could uh, perhaps for the camera mention that we're holding the second seminar on surface metrology for the Americas at WPI uh, in, uh, in mid-October. And, and everybody's welcome to come. There's two days of tutorials uh, followed by uh, uh, standards meetings. And, uh, and we have tutorials for every level, uh, people from just starting with surface metrology to advanced. We've got some of the best people uh, from uh, the United States and Europe uh, giving the tutorials. So we'll have, uh, I think, about 20 tutorials there. So uh, it's a nice opportunity to learn and, and, uh, and figure out how you can do a better job with your surface metrology. So our surface metrology lab at WPI, it's one of the three academic labs of its kind in the country. Um, and we work on solving, solving problems and measurement and analysis of surfaces uh, that can be used by industry and product and process design and, and quality assurance. Well, it starts with, we've got a rough surface, and sometimes it's a replica of the surface or some representation. And then we have a measurement instrument. So the system, that includes some sort of analysis, and that'll be the third part of the talk. And now, uh, and, and what do we do with that? Well, the, uh, one of the things where it's most important, of course, in industry is how can we use this to add value and reduce waste? Um, in addition, I'll, I'll mention things about advancing the science so that uh, we can understand fundamentally what's happening. And we talked about design, quality assurance, and, uh, and we'll mention some things on process control. So, so there's the system, and we're going to be talking about uh, measurement, the first part of it. Um, as we'll get into in the third talk at, uh, at 4 o'clock, about discrimination and correlation. In other words, how can we tell two surfaces apart that uh, we know to be different from the way they were machined or, or the way they're behaving? Um, and, and that's where value is, or how can we get a correlation between a manufacturing process and the kind of surface we're getting so that we can use that for uh, process control. I uh, like what uh, Lord Calvin said, one of the greatest scientists, uh, engineers um, of, the, uh, of the 19th century, um, about measuring things. You need to be able to put, uh, express things in numbers. So the, the first essential step um, is you know, to find some way of measuring it and getting numbers on it. And that's one of the things that's happened in surface metrology uh, in the last, uh, uh, particularly in the last uh, 20 or so years. We've gotten much better at measuring, and it's opened up all kinds of opportunities. So, um, so here's an example of a measurement. And, and the next challenge after we measure that, and, and we can quickly have with an instrument like this, um, over a million elevations uh, describing the surface, a, a million points measured. Um, the, uh, the next thing is how do we characterize that? And that is this that I'll be talking about later. But as we zoom in on this, we can see that there, um, uh, uh, there's a large chaotic component to this that defies conventional kinds of uh, Euclidean description. And uh, so, so getting the essence of that is important. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the past, well, past, current. Most uh, companies are still using profilers. Uh, and, and contact, and we're going to compare that with optical measurements. Um, one of the uh, key points is how do you, you know you have a good measurement, and how can you uh, verify that through the supply chain? You have the person that makes the machine, the person that makes the part, and then the person that perhaps integrates that part into a larger component. Um, and, and all of those people need to agree on uh, how to measure and analyze the surface. So. Um, this is the most commonly used kind of, of measurement, uh, and uh, this is a, a, a stylus profiler, so it contacts the piece. So here's the drive unit profilers there. We'll zoom in on that in a moment. And actually what we're doing right now is trying to measure the stylus, because as we'll see, it's the size of the stylus is important, and the form of the stylus is important in what it measures. So here's a close-up of it making an actual measurement on a part. So this is a part that we had polished that we were doing some, uh, some work 
work on, and I'll show you uh, in a moment. So this is a contact device. And you come up with a measurement like that, and I showed that in the other talk. Um, and so that's a measurement from a turned surface. If we, if we take a look diagrammatically at what's happening, now this is uh, a device that I used uh, years ago in Switzerland that hasn't changed fundamentally. You have some finite force that's holding a stylus down on the surface. There's a spherical tip. There's different standard uh, radii that you can use from about 1 to 10 micrometers. But the combination of the vertical force and the small tip that you want to see details puts a finite stress on the part. And we usually report profiles in this way with a highly exaggerated vertical uh, um, dimension compared to horizontal. And, uh, and so, that, so it gives us a false notion of what the surface is really like. This looks like quite a dramatic surface in this 10 to 1 ratio. But if it's 1 to 1, um, as, as we'll see some examples, it, it wouldn't look nearly so dramatic. This is a scanning electron micrograph from uh, that I took when I was at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne uh, some years ago. And you can see how this aircraft aluminum alloy, this is one of the harder aluminum alloys, is, uh, is damaged essentially by the uh, stylus trace. Now this is a very fine scale. you have trouble uh, seeing that uh, unless it's on a highly polished piece. You never notice it on a machine part. And mostly people consider stylus measurement to be a non-destructive test. Uh, but, uh, but that's not true if you're dealing with a very fine surface. Um, and, and now we're very fortunate to have this partnership with Olympus. Um, and, and here's the, the first Olympus that we had. That's an older version. This is, this is a newer one over here. You know. But uh, this was uh, uh, four years ago when we first got it. Um, one of the neat things about this is that you can teach an undergraduate to make useful measurements, even used in research, and it, literally in 20 minutes. Um, they can be doing useful measurements. Uh, so the finest scales uh, of the geometry are what we call roughness. The largest scales are form, and intermediate is waviness. And uh, this committee, ASME ANSI V46, uh, is a committee that I chair um, for the, and will for the next year. Um, uh, or it's a year and a half, I think, and my term is up. But, uh, but we talk about texture being roughness, uh, waviness in the lay, which is the directionality or uh, anisotropy of the surface. Whoops. Let's see if I can get this to move here. All right, so let's take a look at 2D versus 3D. So here is what you're seeing over here, 3D uh, scanning laser confocal microscope. Now here's what you saw a picture of or a diagram of this. And this is the standard way of looking at a conventional stylus tip. And so when you're doing contact uh, measurement, the shape of your tip is very important because that tells you what kind of things you get into. And if there's damage to the tip, your measurement won't be good. So conventionally, you, you do this by running it over a razor blade. And we were looking at the standard for that uh, recently. And, uh, and, and we had a French student in the lab that we're developing projects with. And I said, why are we running this thing over a razor blade still? Why don't we just put it under the Olympus and measure it? So we took the stylus out, stuck it under the Olympus, and there it is. <laughs> So instead of just getting you know, this profile, because the razor blade is, is, is very sharp compared to the stylus. So when you run the stylus over the razor blade, instead of measuring the razor blade, you're measuring the stylus. Because you can't get uh, a, a smaller radius um, than, than what, you're, what, what you're using. So uh, we compared the two ways to see how they would compare. And so here's the conventional standard way. And it turns out to be you know, like 4.6 micrometers radius. And, and here we're not doing anything very sophisticated, just sort of eyeballing what circle fits into this, because obviously there's different radii on that, and, and we're actually doing more sophisticated work comparing them. So, you know, we're within um, a, about less than 100 nanometers of having the, uh, the same radius by the two measurements. Um, and, and so we're at a much finer scale than you can even detect with light with that. Now, here's the interesting thing. Unfortunately, the student took off to France with his data, and I've been struggling to get it back. But uh, so this, I apologize for the quality of this. But here is the mark left by the stylus measured with the Olympus. And, and you can see how the stylus doesn't even follow a straight track. It's sort of slaloming you know, through 
whatever different you know, variations of micro hardness on, on the surface. This is a 6061 T6 aluminum alloy. It's what we you know used for lots of projects and um, you know products are made out of this. So um, so you have an idea of what sort of things you can detect with the stylus compared to uh, say an optical microscope. Here's something about the depth. I mean the depth of this thing isn't that great, and this you know we're able to to, to measure with the Olympus. So we're looking at depths of you know in the tens of uh, nanometers uh, for, for what the stylus mark leaves. This is kind of revealing. So here is uh, a circle with a radius of about the stylus. And I said we found some other ways of doing it. So there's about a five micrometer radius sitting on a one-to-one -one representation of the surface it's trying to measure. So, um, so, so people have said, you know, when you use a stylus instrument to try to measure the roughness, it's like you're using a basketball to try to measure the roughness of your driveway. And, and I think that's uh, being generous, actually, because it's probably more like using a large beach ball uh, if you just take a look at that visually. Now, the, the, that being said, you still get lots of useful information out of that. And if a stylus is working for you, um, uh, then actually it's, it's interesting to understand why and, and you may actually even have a greater um, uh, greater latitude in, in your roughness than you think you do. Anyway, that's the student that did the work and I wanted to give him some credit for doing that. Um, so that work is continuing and one of the things we're looking at is what is the hardness of this material and, and what is the stylus you know, load and, and, and compared to the hardness. And so there's a, a micro hardness test uh, measured with the Olympus. Now one of the interesting things about this is an aside, if you want to learn more about materials and you take a look at a micro hardness test like this, one of the things that you see in addition to what you traditionally get from a micro hardness test, which is just the diagonals on this, is you can see the way the material is piled up around the corners. And, uh, and so one hypothesis that we want to work on, we'd like to find some partners to develop this though, is that the steeper the pile up, the, um, the less the work hardening. So if the material work hardens, it pushes the deformation out away from the stylus imprint. And, and so uh, as you can see, you can get highly detailed measurements of this so we can learn more from a simple hardness test than we ever knew before. Here's an interesting thing to consider, and, and it's just sort of basic physics when you think about it, but you can't measure the height at an infinitesimally small point. I mean, the matter doesn't essentially exist at that. You know, most of matter is empty space because you get some electrons whirring around. And as we get down to measurements in nanometer and sub-nanometer range, you know, what are we actually measuring and what's interacting with the surface? Something has to interact with the surface to tell us what's there. And that interaction has to take place over a certain size. So, uh, so what we've done here is just superimposed a bunch of circles on a, a measured surface to give the impression that inside that zone where we're actually making a height measurement, there are variations in height. So uh, if we think a little in a little bit more sophisticated way about our measurements, we realize that we're getting some indication of the heights, and, and they may be overlapping, as is here, or, or they may be completely separate. So it's something actually that we're just talking about at the ISO level and standards and, and starting to characterize instruments um, according to the sampling zone. How big a zone are we taking the height measurement over? Um, sampling interval has been something that uh, has been obvious to people and an important point for a long time. But, uh, so we're getting more sophisticated with this. I, I showed this in the first talk, but it's, it's one of my favorite uh, sort of indications of, of what you can do with light. Um, and so this is just a, a, an example part that was made by uh, Nanotech Systems in uh, Swansea, New Hampshire, on a diamond turning machine. By a, essentially a shaping operation, they put in some uh, 500 nanometer grooves. Now here it is uh, shown on an SEM. The problem with the scanning electron microscope is while, and because of the wavelength of the electrons, you can get a very sharp image to a very fine scale. Um, you get no direct height information. And attempts to get good height information out of the SEMs, while there have been several, have not been nearly as good as what you can get um, in the Olympus uh, microscope. So, uh, so here on this, and I think you can make this out on the screen, you can actually see very faintly the, the turning marks from where this was uh, faced, the very smooth facing operation. That you can't actually see on the SEM. We weren't able to, to get that. Um, and, and these grooves, as I said, are 500 nanometers apart. Note that the wavelength of the lasers are only 405. 
So, uh, and, and here, now, after you make the measurement, of course, you can move it around and you can get an impression of the 3D form of that object. And you can actually start seeing that, you know, something about the depths and, and you know, you can take profiles across that. And I'm sure people would be happy to, to measure that for you. Here we took the uh, our, our microscope to its limit, so it's a hundred uh, times uh, lens with an eight times zoom, um, and and we measured uh, over 16 million heights in that to, to make that mark. And you can see the little birds. So this is a very sharp diamond tool that goes down through here and makes that mark. And it's in a, a electroless nickel, so it's got no grains in it. It's amorphous, um, single phase material. So the the sampling interval on this. There's a measurement is uh, is just about four nanometers, so uh, so it's quite a spectacular measurement. And there we can see a similar one um, in 3D. We also see some of the challenges in measurement, and those are things that we're addressing. And Olympus has done a good job addressing. But this was somebody with uh, is a student making this measurement. We see some spikes in that, and that's one of the one of the measurement challenges. If you want to go to a, a finer scale, we're back to contact stuff again. Interestingly enough. And, and so the atomic force microscopy is something a lot of people are familiar with. I just want to mention this, this briefly, but here also you're very influenced by the tip. And I don't know, if, does anybody here have experience with the AFM? Or? doing AFM work. One of the interesting things, though, I remember when we were doing some AFM work, we kept finding this shape repeating on the surface, and we realized, oh, we broke the tip, and that's now the shape of the tip. It looked like little shovel marks. But uh, anyway, so you can go to quite fine scales with that. The problem is very delicate uh, instrument still, and, uh, um, and, and the AFM image that we got from that uh, test part was so poor that uh, I didn't even keep it. So this is a, a, a diagram to compare different kinds of measurement instruments. SPM is the scanning probe microscope. That includes the AFM. One of the interesting things is here that uh, this author put on is that the uh, limit on the optical techniques is one micrometer, and we've just seen 500 nanometer grooves. So, so this instrument over here beats this. But the idea of uh, representation of instruments and that you could map out different instruments with this is uh, came from um, uh, Margaret uh, Stedman, who was shown there at the last uh, um, uh, Met Props, uh, Metrology and Properties of Engineering Surfaces that was held in uh, England last year. Anyway, so that was uh, her idea of representing sort of the resolution and height and resolution horizontally. We've talked about standardizing the ways of plotting instruments on there and have been unsuccessful in doing that. Uh, so if we look at the ISO standards for what a good measurement is, there's you know, sort of trueness and precision. And, and we're not as far along in this as in metrology as we'd like to be in terms of an overall community. Here, uh, the, uh, the, the, the values you get from a measurement, as you can see, are going to be much different from a stylus to an optical. And the question is, how can we use those um, uh, more effectively? Here's an example of some work we've been doing on repeatability. This is from the UBM, and as I said, that's a, that was an Indus series, and the company's been out of business. But just to show you some of the things you can do for repeatability, you take two measurements in a row and plot the height at one position versus uh, on one measurement versus the height in the other. And, and so you can see that we're, uh, in this instrument anyway, um, we expect those should be highly correlated, which they are, but it's not an exact line as it would be if the measurement was repeated exactly. Now, some of that's going to be thermal drift. You're trying to measure down into the hundreds of nanometers, so all kinds of things can affect that. But it's an idea of uh, one way of, of representing this that we're trying to work into a standard uh, currently. So uh, in measuring roughness, um, so the, the trends now are going to optical over stylus with 3D over 2D. And as you can see, you get a, a much uh, more complete picture of what the surface is. And, uh, and some of the needs are greater sophistication and analysis. So how do we analyze these surfaces so that uh, um, we can uh, correlate um, the, uh, the measurements? And how do we put a number on it like uh, uh, Lord Calvin suggested? Uh, uh, so that we can better understand the uh, the texture uh, interactions. That should be understanding of texture interactions. So what we're seeing here is uh, my poor typing. I apologize for that. 
Anyway, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the support that we've gotten from Olympus in the lab, also uh, from uh, Digital Surf, uh, makers of Mountain Software. Safina um, is a, uh, in uh, Kingston, Rhode Island, has support, been supporting our grad students for several years. Um, and uh, Solarius gave us the, the UBM. Uh, Metso Automation also has been supporting our graduate students. And, uh, and we make some software that, uh, for uh, analysis that I'll be talking more about it at 4 o'clock. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Um, and uh, if you might be interested in a graduate certificate program in surface metrology or abrasive processes, uh, let me know. And uh, I'll put you on our mailing list. We're trying to develop that now at WPI and are interested in uh, to, to see what sort of interest there might be in that. Thank you. I got two o'clock. There's still seats left, everybody. Come on in. We're going to talk about measuring roughness. I got to try. The guys at the state fair do an excellent job of bringing people in. I should have gone to the state fair and learned some techniques.